Euphoria is back and better than ever. And let's talk about it. So I'm sure some of you watch Euphoria, maybe not all of you. HBO, one of my favorite shows on HBO. It's just so different. I just, there's no show like it. It's, it's about Rue, played by Zendaya, who is this drug addict she's in high school it's a it's, a, it's a, based on high school kids she's a drug addict um and uh her dad died when she was really young and i guess she had no backbone no one to sort of give her her support her mom is a single mother and so she ends up you know becoming a drug addict um so the story follows her life she falls in love with uh a trans woman jules um and the story is really about their love but Beyond that, and what I really love about this show is that Rue doesn't even get that much screen time. Like most of her screen time is just of her being high, and or it's more it's mostly like her giving voiceovers and telling us the stories of the other characters because there's so many other characters, and they're all so different. They're all so different and so dynamic and interesting and complex. And of course, this is HBO, so this is what you expect, right? Quality writing, such a great show. Uh, so the new season is out now. Definitely go watch the first season, but I'm going to give a review on the pilot episode, not the pilot episode, for the first episode of season two. This episode was all about suspense. It was all about anticipation. So there are a few key moments in the story. I mean, the story started out with Fresco. We finally got to find out, we finally got to hear the story about his childhood. He was raised by his grandmother. Hey. I just spoke to your daddy. You're going to come live with grandma now. And that was all so juicy and interesting the way his grandmother sort of like was such a badass. Like she was so cool. Like, you know, um, just like him being raised by this powerful, you know, woman. But and, and, and what is so interesting to me is that I think the way society sort of shapes uh, power is based on capital like how much money you have but we saw them they don't they're not rich they, i mean they are drug dealers they do make a lot of money but they live in a very sort of like lower middle class like setting right borderline trailer park but more so lower middle class um probably because they're like hood rich like put it that way right so really they're living more in, like in a version of poverty but because they're in the drug industry they they're hood rich um, but despite all of this, we just see her as a gangster. Like she's a gangster. She goes out, she shoots people, beats people up. It's really brutal that episode. And it was, and you know, they set the scene in the, in the beginning, right? And they told us the story of his grandmother. We saw her, you know, shoot his dad in the knees and then she took custody of him. And then after that, we saw her beat somebody with a, I don't know what it was, like some piece of metal, like one of those, like. I don't know, piece of metal. She beat this guy up with that. And we're like, wow, this woman is like a, like, she's brutal. Like, if you mess with her, she's going to mess you up. Um, and it was foreshadowing and it worked. It, 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 the story kind of like gave us, it gave us, they gave us that background about Fresco. And then at the end of the episode, he beats up Nate and he beats the crap out of him. And it's just like, we know where he got that from. He got it from his grandmother. He learned how to be a gangster from his grandmother. Also, just how different it is to have it be his grandmother and not his mom. Like, when you think about a grandma, you're thinking about somebody that's like, you know, a cute grandma who's old and makes you, bakes you cookies and, you know, takes care of you and you have so much fun with your grandma. You don't think about a grandma as like a drug dealer who's like acting like a single mom, acting like 10, 20, 30 years younger than her age. You don't like see that. So that also made it super interesting. So that was one component of the story, Fresco's story. And we saw both sides of him, his complex character. We already know him as a good person, someone we trust, someone that protects Rue, someone that's just like a big a uh, fluffy teddy bear that's how we see him right in the story um and so what made the contrast so much more dynamic and interesting is that the fur for the first time we saw how how dark he could really be when he beat nate up and he didn't just like beat him up like it was a i couldn't watch i had to pause i had to pause and i couldn't watch the whole thing through because it was so brutal like he looked like he just like destroyed his skull like that's what it looked like 
also super interesting casting and story like that he's taking care of this young boy and he's now a drug he's now a drug dealer this young little boy and it's like that's how fresco started and he's he's just pretty much like followed in or repeated everything that his grandmother did and it's it's kind of reflects in real like real life how in in real life we as people typically are shaped by our parenting and we end up being exactly like our parents um in some way shape or form but that was that was a theme of the whole episode it was about suspense it was about tension we saw this in various places i want to say about six different places or six different scene types six different storylines we saw this like tension build and and i'm the kind of person when tension builds either when tension builds or something stupid happens someone does something cringe or stupid i have to pause because i can't take it i can't it's too much either like it's too much tension for me it's too cringe for me or whatever the case is i have to stop i have to pause and i have to go and do something else for like 30 minutes just to get my mind off of the stupidity. Sometimes I'll go for like a day because I'm not going to deal with this nonsense or I'll go, I'll leave and I just won't remember. And then I come back and I'm like, oh gosh, this cringe scene again. So that's what happened in this episode. Like, but it was so riveting. I, this wasn't, this wasn't a situation where I could leave for a day. I was gone for like five, 10 minutes. Maybe I'll stop. I'll watch a YouTube video just to ease my mind and reduce the tension. So I can only imagine if somebody's watching this, like from start to finish, the tension must be insane it must be like really really riveting which i just can't deal with that my emotions i can't deal with that i need to pause go do something else clear my head and then come back to it <laughs> so the first place where we saw the tension was in the car when the girl in the car the girl in the car was taking heroin and rue was like this is not a good time to take heroin they just went to do a drug fresco and the other guy and his his younger brother but either way back to the storyline so she's taking heroin in the car and i'm like i can't watch this, this is ridiculous and then of course as she shoots up somebody snatches her from the window and they bring them into the apartment and it's it's crazy then the part when they you know have to take off their clothes that was also cringe then the part when Nate, the next part when I was like cringing, I had to, or next part when I had to pause was when Nate was speeding in the car. I was like, they're definitely going to get into an accident because they already said, they also, they already built up the tension where, where Cassie's sister kept looking for her, Lexi, her sister kept looking for her and she couldn't find her. And so we were like, okay. And they were like, this is strange. This is not normal. And so I was like, obviously they must've gone into a car accident. Right. And it just, it just, it's a, it's a great thing to use in screenwriting to add what they call devices little devices here and here and there so you can build tension right and so that was a way they built tension and made it super super interesting then the next part was the bathroom when cassie was now cheating with her on her oh god so basically cassie is best friends with maddie and Nate is good or best friends with Chris. Cassie is dating Chris. Nate is dating or just broke up with Maddie. Cassie is kind of broke up with Chris. But now Cassie and Nate are hooking up. So you're hooking up. Both of you are hooking up with your best friend's boyfriend slash girlfriend. That's messed up. So it was like so crazy. And then what happens? They're in the bathroom hooking up. And then, of course, Maddie's knocking on the door, and now she's stuck, so she has to be stuck in the bathroom. She's stuck in the bathroom for, like, all the whole second act or, like, a, a long period of time, and Cassie's just in the bathroom. She starts, she invites another guy into the bathroom with her, or he invites her in, and they're smoking weed together. She's just chilling in the bathroom, Maddie, and she's about to, she's about to catch Cassie. So the tension there was, was high. What's another part that the tension was high? So much tension. It was, everything else was just so high. Like, oh, the next part was Rue overdosing. Now, after all that tension that you guys put us through, the next part is now, okay, let's, let's give Rue a, a roller coaster. Now, she almost overdoses. She takes heroin. She takes heroin, which is like, wow, that's a, she's like graduated and now she's now taking heroin. And she almost, she almost, she almost overdosed. Then the next part, goes back to the bathroom and the cell phone in the bathroom her cell phone vibrates in the bathroom 
And the guy opens the bathroom. He's like, some girl passed out in the bathroom. And she's like, Maddie's like, who cares? Let's leave. <sighs> so much tension. So much tension through the episode. So dynamic. So great. I mean, great storytelling. They really came with a bang this season. And, of course, it's it's Zendaya, so you expect quality. Like, she's going to sign up to a quality show. Season 1 was, was, was so interesting, so different, so dynamic. Um, and I love that this season is not only living up to that, but it's it's taking it to another level. And I watched like a mini documentary that HBO made about their planning into going into the season. Obviously, we know COVID happened, so we haven't seen Euphoria in like two years, right? It's been a long time, and, and that means that the last time that they filmed was like 2018 or something. So it's been a long time. They've all grown. They've all evolved. And so, but they still wanted to come with a bang. And I what I find quite good is the fact that because they had so much more time they didn't sort of rush this season they had the chance to really create a quality season um with season two and i'm just so i'm just so excited to see what they have for us uh i think it's gonna be incredible it's definitely a show that you guys should go watch it's one of hbo's finest and i think they their premiere had yeah their premiere set the strongest hbo series digital uh premiere record which I think was like 2.5 million views. I don't know if HBO should be announcing how many views it got, but I guess they're not competing with Netflix. <laughs> 2.4 million views, and it was the big, their biggest premiere ever. Let's remember, Game of Thrones hasn't even started yet, <laughs> or the new Game of Thrones. So when, once that starts, forget about this. But either way, great show, just interesting, dynamic storytelling, just raw, authentic, just interesting cinematography, interesting cinematography interesting art direction it's just a great great high quality show definitely go check it out and if you do watch if you have watched it let me know your thoughts leave a comment down below don't forget to like follow subscribe all the above my name is kenem and see you next time a peace we've just launched mintedculture.com a way for you to engage with all our content across social media. I know you guys are used to seeing brand video pro content, but I have other channels. I have the Kenem O Show, which is a more, uh, it's a channel more about relationships, dating, modern culture, all the stuff that you saw me posting on this channel about the red pill, about modern dating, about modern culture, all my cultural essays. I've moved them to that channel. This channel, I'm going to stay focused on you know, having this dynamic discussions about trending topics in media, entertainment, music, etc. So I'm going to keep, and Web3, all of that. So this channel is going to be hyper-focused on this, but I've moved all my content about, you know, like I said, all that content is going to go on the Kenem O Show. So go uh, follow that channel. And definitely you could go to mintedculture.com where I'm going to be posting all my videos from all my platforms on that website every single day. Then I also have Stream OVG Business, which is a channel more focused on business, um, entrepreneurship, making money, personal finances, and business opportunities. So go check that out too. And then of course, there's Stream OVG about black history, business, politics, and culture. Um, so all of these different platforms are highlighted on mintedculture.com. So be sure to go check out mintedculture.com.